All right, guys, we're back here to talk about constructing your Dalmatic. Okay, so whenever you have um, a priest asking for a Dalmatic, you have to decide if you're going to use the Gothic pattern or the Roman pattern. I don't think it much matters other than the length. So if you definitely have a Gothic chasuble you're matching it with, then use the Gothic pattern and vice versa with the Roman. But sometimes you get like a Philip Neary or you get something that's, Kind of a cross between the two. Um, this particular project has um, some Philip, Philip Neary leanings, but it doesn't look like a Philip Neary. It doesn't have um, the banding around the edge and stuff like that. So um, just going with a straight gothic look, or I'm sorry, a straight Roman look wouldn't necessarily be right. So this is what I mean by, you know, your, your styling, your design is very flexible. So I'm using the um, Roman pattern for this, for this Dalmatic set. I've got a Dalmatic and a tunic, so obviously I have those um, length and width differences. Um, but he didn't want the bars, okay? He wanted both of them to have an embroidery, you know, right here on the chest. So this is what I have. I did an embroidery on this. Um, since my embroidery was going to require having interfacing and backing, I went ahead and did backing all the way down, all the way down the length of it so that it would be seamless um, and that you wouldn't be able to see like some cut out here, you know, right where um, it goes. So basically you, you cut your stuff out, okay? And then I did my embroidery right in the center. This is where the neck starts. I have it marked. And I have the neck marked on the other side. But I don't cut it while I'm working with it at first because it keeps it from fraying. Like that neck is just delicate. And these silks tend to fray a lot and shed a lot of um, shed a lot of strings. And I don't I don't want to deal with all that. So I just wait until I've got it a little bit further. Um, one thing I did. Um, or one thing we did, we decided, was to put this wide banding, this wide banding, this is about three and a half inches, I believe, uh, three and a quarter, this is about three and a quarter inches, okay? So my width, <clears throat> if I was using one inch galoon, okay, would normally be between 12 and 14 inches, okay, 12 and 14 inches from inside edge to in inside edge to inside edge. And then you're gonna have this like one inch galoon around the neck. And so, you know, you have one inch galoon and then you need a space here before your other one inch galoon comes. So, I mean, just naturally, it's gonna be a little bit, The it's just gonna be different, you know? Um, but since this is so wide, I'm not going you know, 12 inches between the inside of this to inside of that, or it's gonna be like, you know, hanging off their shoulder here. So uh, I looked at it and I did five inches from the center, um, from the center to the edge, which gives it a 10 inch, 10 inch gap. And that ended up looking really nice. Um, on my Dalmatic, or, so this is a Dalmatic, the other, the other piece I have is a tunic. Um, on my Dalmatic, I'm also gonna be putting the bar on the sleeve so I'm gonna be putting it down here now one thing I've had to do with these is I've had to prepare it so um, I put together my front and my back and I prepared the edge see this has a bit of a curve or uh, not a curve but a slant to it and it goes like this and what it's gonna do is it's gonna meet up with the other piece of galoon I did not put these on before putting the sleeve edge together, I went ahead <laughs> and put them on, or put these together um, separately and then applied it where the seam matched the seam of my, um, of my Dalmatic here, of my shoulder. So I'm gonna go get the other one and show you what that looks like. is completely put together and let's see, here. so you can see here 
you can see here that we have, um, I applied this on top. And here's the thing. I am putting also, um, to make this banding pop against this, um, this gold, the saffron gold um, silk, I needed to put a red piping in between. So I made this red piping out of the same material as my lining. And then I've applied that to the banding before I put the banding on. But you can see here, it's much easier. Um, piping's hard to, to get to come together properly. So um, in this case, I went ahead and put the banding together and then just did the piping straight across. And it was a little tricky when I got to here, but all in all, it, it turned out looking really, really nice, okay? So I applied five, you know, five inches from the center, five inches from the center, we have a 10 inch gap. And then we laid out, um, we laid it all out together, okay? Like the, um, we laid our uh, top, our face fabric onto our uh, lining fabric. And uh, my daughter went around and pinned the whole thing. She smoothed it all out, made sure everything lined up properly, and then she pinned it. And today what I've done is I went ahead and stitched it all together, leaving a gap. So in the back, I've left a, you know, an okay size little gap. It's probably six to eight inches. You can leave more or less, whatever you feel like you need. And we did not do the neck. Okay, so the neck is open at the moment. Um, and then what I did was I took my two, my two ironing sticks, right? Um, and this is so important. You take this in here and you put it in, um, and for as much time as this takes you to do this kind of ironing, it's gonna take you way longer to try and turn it inside out and, and iron it, you know, by pulling them apart and trying to get, you know, each thing to bend right. So I take this and I use this to split the seam like this, and then I iron it as I split the seam. And I went around the entire inside edge of this entire thing. You see my shoulders are put together, my shoulders are put together, and then I put everything together and stitched around the whole outside except for one spot along the straight edge back. So here's the bottom edge, here's the armpit, and I left one gap right here. Because we also left the neck hole undone, I don't have to pull everything through that little gap. We'll see why I left the little gap here in a second. So now that I've got everything um, ready to be turned inside out, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it inside out and give you guys a peek to what I did here. And I'm turning it inside out through the neck hole That's right side out, okay? So, now that it's right side out, you can see how I've applied, how I've applied this on. Now, also making sure that um, each piece of, of banding that starts from here is all cut at the exact same spot, okay? So that I have mirroring images right here going all the way down. Okay, it's really important um, that your, your stuff looks consistent. You don't have like it wonky on one side and different on the other, okay? So now that I've done, um, I've pulled this right side out, okay? Um, in a little bit, 
I will go through and I will straighten out my corners and my edges and I'll go through that with you um, in our next video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find, <laughs> I'm gonna find my hole. See my hole here? See this? And I'm gonna go up through this hole now. And we're gonna use a similar method as to what we used with, um, so we're using a similar method as to what you use doing a hole outside of a, um, of a Gothic. Um, because a Gothic is so big and because there aren't any turns and it's all just one, one big circle and there's uh, spots you can mark and kind of pinpoint and make sure they hit together, <clears throat> um, you always do the neck first on a Gothic and then the outside edge using this technique. In this case, because a Dalmatic has all these juts and turns and, and crazy things. No, no, go on. Um, because it has all these different turns and, and things of this nature, right? Like what we've got going here. <clears throat> what we're going to do is use this method to do just um, the inside. So we're gonna pull our neck hole, pull our neck hole through our, um, through this, okay? And then we're going to find a way to do um, here like this. So before I pull my neck hole through, maybe I should just do it. I'm gonna take, here's my seam and here's my seam that normally go together, okay? And when we stitch them, we're gonna be placing them inwardly towards each other, right? So do that and then pull it to here. It's gonna feel very wrong doing this. It's gonna feel like you're, you're doing something really weird. So what we're gonna do is then we're gonna pin it. And I'm gonna pin around this whole outside of this neck going in through this hole. And it's gonna be really strange to do it this way. That's how we're gonna do it. Okay, so I went through my little hole in the end, uh, the back side, and I did the little twisty, turny, very confusing method to get the neck hole done. And I would tell you that this is difficult. <laughs> um, I don't think technique wise it's all that difficult, but I think that in, in like practice, it's a real pain in the neck. So um, once you get the neck hole um, stitched, you want to clip, you know, clip your notches in and then you can turn it, you know, right side out again, showing that you have this, um, this beautiful, you know, neck done. Now, another thing you could do, I'm not putting galoon around the entire edge of this, um, like I would normally do with a Roman Dalmatic, but in this case, you could use the, um, the pin and tuck method where you put, um, I just did not cut this with that in consideration. So what you would have to do is cut your neck hole on, um, on your lining to be half an inch, like longer than, um, than the gold, like than the face. So that you put galoon around the edge and then you, um, turn that lining up and in underneath the glue. And that would actually be an easier option to close this neck, but I did not plan that way. So I am going to now take this and press the neck and press out the edges. Um, and when I'm finished, when I'm finished, I will also take my little, um, hole that I've made this little hole and I will hand stitch that shut 
So that is, um, in a nutshell, how you uh, put together a Dalmatic. And I hope I walked you through that well enough. Um, you know, using the techniques that you've learned with, with constructing any garment, this follows all those same all those same techniques, okay? I employed something a little different with our neck, um, but you know, there's lots of ways to do the neck. So, all right, have a great day, guys, bye.